Hey guys, this is Miguel. I'm an engineer at Horizon Hobby with uh, Spectrum RC, and uh, I will be showing you guys how to hook up the SPM4650, our new micro serial receiver, to Betaflight. In case you guys did not know, the 4650 is a new micro receiver that um, is basically kind of an upgrade to the 4648 if you used that before. Um, it's got the new SRXL2 protocol. So SRXL2 is a new serial protocol that's receiver to flight controller over the wire, not a new RF protocol. We are still using DSMX or DSM2 if you guys have a radio that supports that. So I'll walk you guys through how you wire this to Betaflight, what you have to set up, where you get the firmware. So for the wiring to this receiver, I have a shout out to Kevin. Uh, white Noise FPV. He hooked me up with this flight controller and I've been using it for a lot of testing on my desk. So I got a White Noise FPV F4. I got my receiver hooked up to ground 5 volt output. So this receiver does support 3.3 volts to 8.4. So if you have a 3.3 or 5 volt wire on your previous flight controller, you can use those. Um, and then the signal line does have to connect to the TX pin of the UR, not RX, because this is a bi-directional link and STM32 flight controllers only do bi-directional communication on TX pins. Um, there are some exceptions to that, but in this case, just hook it up to a TX pin. If you did have a 4649T before, uh, and you're using the connector on this, keep in mind this is the same connector, but the pinout has changed. So don't just try taking that connector and plugging it into this, because you could fry your board. Uh, most of you guys will probably be soldering wires directly to the receiver, as this does, does come with the connector unpopulated. Um, so you'll probably solder directly. The labels are on the receiver silk screen. Signal line to TX pin, ground to ground, and power to five volts or 3.3, whatever you have. So that's it, the wiring is pretty simple. Now we can talk about the Betaflight setup. So we have um, a GitHub page. It's called github.com slash spectrumrc. Um, and we have a Betaflight repository there and we'll have the link below so you guys can follow that. There's a SRXL2 uh, documentation repo that talks about what SRXL2 is, has libraries for developers out there that want to support that, and it's got a list of known supported hardware. Then we have another page, the Betaflight uh, fork that we have, which has a release currently for 4.0.3, and we'll be releasing, we'll be having more releases down the line until that's merged with Betaflight. Um, and so here, we talk about the SRXL2 a little bit, just a brief description. We have the wiring instructions, which is basically signal wire to TX pin on the UART and voltage 3.3 to 8.4 volts. And then we have a list of CLI settings. So most of these settings are things you would normally set up when you're setting your receiver up, but there is one specific one and it's this the serial RX provider. So since the configurator hasn't been updated yet to include this on the protocol dropdown list, you have to set it in the CLI. So that is one of the commands included here. And this will have, we included the, the spectrum mapping. So TAER1234, um, telemetry enable, RX serial enable, um, basically just removing steps that you have to go through. So. On the configurator, when you set this up, you don't have to do anything receiver related except for on your port, just make sure you enable the right UART. But anyway, these are the CLI settings you will need for this receiver to work. Not all of them are required for it to work, but it's, I just kind of put in things you'll probably change anyway. So just make sure you have these set and everything should be fine. There's also a bind command. So for those of you that have used Spectrum receivers before, there was a set uh, serial RX sat bind or something like that and you'd have to set a number. Um, you don't have to use that for SRXL2 receivers anymore. You can use this command and it'll just put it straight into bind mode, no power cycling or anything like that. So it's a little more convenient. And then down here, we have all our firmwares. So in my case, uh, for this board, I'm using the 
Omnibus F4 target. So I've already downloaded that. And then we'll go to our Betaflight configurator and we'll go to the firmware flasher. We're not using the dropdown here because we downloaded it. So you're gonna do load firmware local and choose the file that you downloaded and then flash the firmware. And in my case, I have full chip array set. Um, you might be doing a CLI dump or restore from a previous uh, configuration. But in this case, I'm starting from zero. So I did a full chip erase, I flashed that. Now we're gonna connect to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take all these CLI settings I talked about earlier, copy that, paste them in here, and save. Now it's gonna reboot. And then the one thing you do have to set separately is which port your receiver is on. All right, so once you set those CLI settings, you'll want to go to the ports tab and you will have to set the port that you did have your uh, receiver wired to. In this case, I'm using UART1. So then if we go to our receiver tab, we have all our inputs working. The channel mapping was one of the things we set through um, CLI already. Uh, we are not using an RSSI channel, like a dummy channel as we did with the 4649T update. You should already have RSSI. If you set up RSSI in the OSD, um, that should display on there as well as it does on the configurator. If you do have a VTX wired, you would set that up in the way you normally would and the VTX commands coming in over SRXL2 will get converted to whatever video transmitter you are using um, that is supported by Betaflight in this case we'd have um, uh, Immersion RC Tramp or TBS Smart Audio. But that's it for the Betaflight setup. After that, you can set up everything else the way you normally would, and you'll be good to go. So what do we get out of this receiver with Betaflight? Let's plug this one in, since my current flight controller is not plugged in. So this, this quad already has everything set up that we just talked about. Um, I can go here into range test mode again and I can press that button and move it away and you can see the RSSI changing there on the bottom right. Let's do VTX channel changing. So here on the transmitter, so on the iX12, it's model adjust video TX and you have your options for video transmitter uh, stuff. Uh, what band is that's on race eight? So let's change that to channel four and hit send. So that changes the video transmitter channel. Um, set that to race band eight, that's there. We can, or sorry, race band four. We can change that back to eight. Hit send, don't go away, back to eight, there we go. Back to eight. So you can change that back and forth. You can set the power, all that good stuff. Um, and then we can talk about the text gen menu. So on the transmitter, we can go to model setup and we can go to our telemetry screen. I've already done an auto config here, but one of the sensors it pulls up is the text gen. And this will allow us to modify settings on the transmitter, at least in this case for beta flight they have the OSD menu also reproduced on the, on what is our text sensor uh, menu. So you don't have to have your goggles on to do that. So once that's on there, we can go back and we can scroll to the text gen screen. So we scrolled to um, the text gen sensor on our main menu. Um, so we're going to do throttle mid, pitch up and yaw left, and that'll bring up the menu. And then we can navigate that so we can change profile settings. If you go right, you enter that menu. So you got PID profiles, you can change PIDs and that sort of thing. Use the yaw stick to leave that menu, go left on the yaw stick. Um, we got some other things like video transmitter stuff. If you don't want to use the video transmitter menu that we have on the built into the transmitter, you can do it through this text gen screen. 
And this is all specific to Betaflight. Every flight controller can use this telemetry sensor to display whatever they want. And you can exit or save and exit, whatever you want to do, and then it'll reboot. And that's it. This menu is also available on our DX radios, not just IX. It looks a little bit different than this, but that same sensor is available and you can do the same things with this and the video transmitter channel changing. Aside from that, we still have all the other telemetry sensors that Betaflight will send, but it is flyby, so these are really mostly just going to be useful in the pits if you want to verify your voltage real quickly, or you want to see how many milliamp hours you consumed after you landed, but you already took your goggles off. Really, whatever Betaflight sends, it'll be there. Okay guys, I hope this tutorial helped you learn how to use your SRXL2 receiver with Betaflight and maybe shed some light on some of the features that can be used with SRXL2. Um, obviously, currently this is the only receiver that has it, but you can be sure to expect more down the line.